ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, this is what I wanted to talk about. Not so much Malcolm X or his speeches. Um, I do have a quote from one of his speeches that I put in this idiot right here. And the quote was, the propaganda of the American government or the press is skillfully designed to make it appear that our people, our black people in the Caribbean or Caribbean, Africa, and in America are content, docile, and willing to go along with the system that has kept us in slavery and adage and second-class citizenship. The government. This is government propaganda. This is government spelled ugly. Yes, I'm telling you what it is. You don't have nothing from the paper today that is not government controlled. Propaganda, they believe in propaganda, psychological warfare. Ever since I heard that speech from a group known as UTFO, Untouchable Force Organization. UTFO, the ones who did the song Roxanne, Roxanne, and Split Personality, Split Personality. I can control my split personality. Okay, that group, which was at the time my favorite of all time because they were lyricists, um, they put this in a song known as Something for the Head. And that's because the educated rapper was the uh, Doc uh, I-C-E, Dr. Ice C-E. Uh, and the educated rapper were the ones who took the lead in that particular song, and they were the lyricists. And when they said something for the hit, that's exactly what it was designed for. Ladies and gentlemen, the speech by Malcolm X, everybody was told by the media that Malcolm X was a militant. Now, what's a militant? Mama, I don't know what a militant is, but it sounds bad. Exactly. They made us think that the Black Panthers were militant. Excuse me. What's a militant? Mama, I don't know what a militant is, but it sounds really bad. Malcolm X, you never saw him walk around with a gun. But even if he did walk around with a gun, nobody ever accused him of threatening to shoot someone or assaulting someone. Yes, 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 yes. He came from a life of crime. <sighs> He had been arrested previously. And individuals tried to use that against him to take away from his character. Was I a fan of Malcolm X? I wasn't even born! I'm sorry, I apologize. <laughs> Am I a fan of Malcolm X? Now? No. But I will tell you something. I know that if he had been alive now and been out there giving them speeches, eventually he and I would have met. Why? Because not the same ideologies, uh, two different spectrums, but we would have met because there was some similarities in the thought process. See, Malcolm X said something that made a lot of sense. I'm going to repeat what he said because it makes a lot of sense. How come color folk, color folk, and I'm not talking about and I want you all to understand this because I, I have been very pissed off by this over the years. In America, there's only one group known as colored folk. And that's those people who were brought over as slaves. I know, I know, I know. Everybody want to call themselves brown, purple, green, and orange. Stop that. Stop riding on that bandwagon. No, no, no. We're not saying that you can't share in the wealth. But what we're trying to say when we are speaking that way is it's only them colored folks who they write civil rights bills for. Hold on now. Let me make sure you guys understand. Individuals who are Hispanic in America, Spanish American, okay, Latin American in America, born in America, born in the U. Anyway, you guys don't have to. March for civil rights. Only black folk. My Asian counterparts. Y'all don't have to march for civil rights. Only black folk. 
ain't nobody calling you black. Ain't nobody calling y'all Negro. But no, they called us all kind of other names. Yes, they may have. Because Papa may have. Oh, man, God bless that child. But y'all need to understand. Now I, I get it now. I, I'm older, so I can see by looking back. But I get it now. I get why so many people of color were getting upset with the way things are going. So let me explain what Malcolm said that made a lot of sense. No other group in this country had to fight for so-called civil rights. No other group in this country had to fight for the right to quote-unquote vote. Now, uh, wait, 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 hold on, y'all, y'all, no, no, get the picture. I am one of Jehovah's Witnesses. I've never voted. I never will vote. I don't care to vote. Why would I vote for man's government when my God, Jehovah, is my God and he has a kingdom that he has set up? Whether you believe it or not, it's not the point. When I say my God, I'm talking about what I believe. I don't care about your belief. Oh, well, you don't care about mine? Then just stop watching this video. See how simple that is? But I'll say it again. I don't vote. Jesus, the son of my God, said, hey, my followers are no part of this world. Well, I choose to be a follower of the Lord Jesus, the greatest man who ever lived. I am a follower of him. But he's no longer a man. That's right. But not everybody I don't care. It has nothing to do with what they believe. I don't care what somebody else believes. They can hold on to their beliefs. Well, they don't care about you, and then they can stop watching my videos. See how simple that is? Well, anyway, Jesus says that his followers are no part of the world. Well, the world votes. Everybody wants to talk about democracy. The United States is not a democracy. Again, what Malcolm X said about how the American Revolution was to take care of those businessmen so because they didn't want the king of England taxing them. It had nothing to do with free, freedom from England. We've never been free from England, but the businessmen didn't want England taxing them. Okay, that's what the revolution was about. Go back and do your history. It had nothing to do with independence. It had everything to do with taxation. The Civil War. The Civil War wasn't about blacks, Negroes, niggers. It wasn't about any of that. Go back and look at the history. Look at what the political events were that were going on at the time. And you will see that you've been lied to. They keep coming up with all of these civil rights laws, integration laws, segregation laws. And notice this. They're never enforced. Let me give you an example. George Floyd, anybody? Anybody remember George Floyd? Really? Just about forgot about that one, huh? Nobody talking about it no more. But, 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 he was on fentanyl. Really? So he deserved to be choked to death in the middle of the street. Well, he wasn't choked. What? The man leaned on his neck and he said, I can't breathe, and you call that not being choked? Go look at the definition for being choked. Ignorant mother. But he was on fentanyl. Excuse me. Like I said again. Does that give anyone an excuse for choking someone to death? What about Mr. Gardner? Well, he was selling a, a cigarette on the street. Really? So that gave the police the right to choke him to death. What about Trayvon Martin? Oh, well, he was, uh, uh, well, I don't know what he did, but he got something wrong. He was a gang member. That's what he was. Trayvon Martin was a gang member. Going to go see his girlfriend, but he was a gang member. So that gave the guy cause to stand his ground and shoot that kid to death. Trayvon Martin posed no threat. He didn't have a weapon. And he was shot to death. Only in America. Go ahead. Go look at all the other countries. Yeah, this type of stuff happens in Britain, too, because it's the same form of government, set up the same way. There's racism in Britain, too. 
But hold on, hold on, hold on. A lot of you people who are not persons of color, and I'm really talking about colored folk. I'm not talking about those people who call themselves brown. I'm not talking about people who call themselves yellow, green, orange, purple, or blue. I'm talking about the original colored folk. And I have to do that because when other people say they're a part of that group that I'm mentioning now, that takes away from the fact that these acts were passed specifically for that group. Then they put that that token on the Supreme Court, Carter, and now this new token, Jackson, on the Supreme Court, and nobody pays attention. They can't do anything. You have them getting rid of affirmative so-called action. Ladies and gentlemen, affirmative affirmative so-called action was brought in to the mix because of the racial segregation that goes on in businesses and colleges and so on and so forth. But no, we can't speak up on that stuff because the Constitution says everybody shall be treated equally. And so we got to get rid of affirmative action. But wait a minute. Doesn't that defeat the whole purpose why they came up with affirmative action in the first place? Is because they weren't treating everybody equally? And if I say, Lord, have mercy, will you understand? I sit here realizing a couple of things. And what I realize, ladies and gentlemen, and it's real simple. In America, one of the most racist nations in the world, but not the only racist nation, China is racist, Brazil is racist, Britain is racist, Germany is racist, Italy is racist. All of these countries bring in this ideology of separation. Now, wait a minute. Didn't you just say something about color folk and the real color folk and the original color folk? Isn't that separation? Nope. Because I was saying in context the reason why those acts were brought about. The reason why the civil so-called rights law were brought about. If other people benefited from them, hey, peace on to thee. If other people benefited from the desegregation act, peace on to thee. Equal protection of law. However, when it came to slavery, nobody else was sharing in that group. Now, I'm going to tell it to you like it is because nobody else is going to tell it to you but a separate small group of people they tried to enslave other races especially the people in Mexico they tried to enslave them and it didn't work hold on they tried to enslave white folk and it didn't work they tried to enslave Japanese and other members of the Asian race And it didn't work. Go ahead and look at the Italians and the French. They all tried. Look at the Spaniards. They all tried, and it didn't work. Why black folk? Well, the reason why they found it easier to enslave black folk is because of their build. You hear it all the time, the athleticism of them. The workability of them, yes, they use them as a commodity. They are workforces. And so that's what they did. They segregated them that way. It's a wonderful world. Well, people are saying, well, well, what can we do about it? Really? You Would you really like to know what you can do about it? Well, you can start calling it for what it is. See, I've done that. I've gone in the court and told uh, the courts in Mississippi how racist they are. I told him I ain't from there, but I can see how racist you are because you're still a racist state, Mississippi, Alabama, Arkansas, Missouri, California, New York, Florida. You guys are all still colonialist states. You're still racist. Doesn't matter. I don't care if you don't think you are. 
you're still racist because the United States is still a race-based country. Other countries have their caste system. You know, if you're poor, you remain poor, your family remains poor and for generations. But in the United States, if you're a former slave, they're going to keep you isolated, segregated, and a slave. Now, hold on now. We've heard of the fact that they're doing the same thing to white folk that they did to the colored folk when it comes to slavery. Y'all better believe it. It's the William, William, William Lynch doctrine. You mean Willie Lynch? I mean Willie, I mean Billy, I mean all the Lynches. And so they're applying it to everybody. So yes, 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 y'all all in the same boat right now. But I just need y'all to understand what Malcolm was talking about. Because let's just say this. Malcolm was highlighting the fact that no other group has had to fight for quote-unquote civil rights. No other group has had legislative laws passed for which they provided no access, no force, or anything. Remember, they passed the Civil Rights Act of 1964, permitting people to vote. Excuse me, why did they have to pass that law? (laughs) Why did they have to pass that law permitting colored folks to vote? No, no, no. Back your old cell phone up. Okay, back that thing on up. Let me make sure you understand. Remember home of the brave, land of the free? So why did they have to pass that legislation if everybody was free? Lean on me. When you're not strong, I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought y'all were going to give me an answer to that. Why did they have to pass the legislation if everybody in the United States were equal, if everybody in the United States were free? The reason why they had to pass that legislation, pay attention, because you ain't listening, because it's still a racist country. They still segregate. Why do you think they had to pass desegregation laws? Because it doesn't matter what the books say. The reality say it's still a racist country. Well, the police kill just as many white people as they do black. Excuse me. Look here, you ignorant mother. Nobody's talking about how many white folks the police kill. What they are talking about, the fact is, like Mr. Nichols. Ladies and gentlemen, he didn't have any weapons. Oh, those were black officers. Every last one of them were person of color. So person of color, black on black. No, those were police officers. We're not talking about skin color. Well, all the other ones were white officers. No, because in the George Floyd case, one of them actually happened to have been Asian. So, no, you don't get to do that. No, 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 no. When you have police officers beating up on people, you must understand where the police came from. What is their original mandate? They were the slave catchers, people. If an escaped slave were to escape, they had these posses that would go and they would track down with the bloodhounds and everything. Isn't that the same way they look for a prisoner? That's right, because that's what they did. Them became the police of the towns and the areas. And then they started having them serve them officers and so forth. And there you go, the beginning of the police force. And guess what? Nobody goes to the root of the problem. We keep having these police officers kill, 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 kill. We're not even going to talk. You know, I forgot the young man's name that was in California that was in his backyard on his cell phone. The police said they were looking for a suspect, and he's on his cell phone, and the officer shot this young man. I'm sorry I forgot about his name, but I haven't forgot about the situation because it happens too much. Just this year alone, too many people have been killed by police officers that were unarmed. Now, why are police officers being allowed to get away with this? Well, I'll tell you. Because none of the family members know about the police having bonds and filing a claim against the police officer's bond. 
because these attorneys are not telling them about it. Why aren't the attorneys that are being hired by these families, you know, the ones that are standing next to them, you know, like uh, Mr. Nichols, the attorney, now everybody want to say that he's a good guy? No, he's doing it for money, and he knows he's doing it for publicity and money. Gets a lot of money. He gets a lot of money when he wins. And that's why he only takes the high-profile cases where they're going to settle because it's too embarrassing. He's an attorney, people. The reason why the attorneys don't tell none of you guys that all public officers must be bonded, either with an exceptional bond or obligations bond or a surety obligations bond. The reason why it's called an obligations bond it's because they took an oath of office, so they're obligated to follow their oath of office. That's why you have to remind even a peace officer that pulls you over before he says another word. Excuse me. Are you a peace officer? Well, please let me know that I have to remind you that you're under oath. Just that simple. Just tell every peace officer you meet up with, I just have to remind you that you're under oath. What can I do for you, officer? License and registration. Excuse me? License and registration. Why do I need to provide you license? Don't you mean identification? Well, your ID. And then hand them an ID. You don't have to give them a driver's license. Give them an ID. If he violates your rights, you don't have to give them the registration to no vehicle, people. They already have it on the license plate. You don't need to give them no stupid registration. Proof of insurance. In certain states like California, in order for your vehicle to be registered, you have to have insurance. It's already in the system. So when they run it, it's already in the system. You don't have to provide them a copy of the insurance. Just understand that. Now, me, pay attention. My automobiles are registered in the company name. No, not engaging in commerce, nonprofit organization. And so we're self-bonded organizations because of the amount of revenue. So we're self-bonded organizations. No need to carry insurance. You just need to show proof that you have that coverage about the bonding. Many of you don't understand You can go and get a surety bond for yourself and your corporation, which will cover the vehicle. You just have to check to make sure it covers vehicles when you do the research. All right, do not email me about this or text me about this. I'm just talking right now, just talking. Well, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, police officers, every public official is under oath. I have a public official that I've contacted. They said they're going to call me back. I'm about to send them a notification since they want to ignore me, that I want the oath of office information and the a copy of the oath of office, and I want a copy of the bond information so that I can file a claim against their bond. Apparently, they don't seem to understand me, and they think I'm a punk, and I don't play that. So I'm going to go after that bond. I'm going at, this is a, I told you guys, this is the year of the lawsuit and the year after going after everybody's bond. Everybody's bond. Every public official... Every public official, every public official must have some type of insurance. It really is just that simple. Okay? Now, I'm not going to stay on this because i got work to do, but I definitely just wanted to take the time to say what was on my mind, especially thinking about the Malcolm X speeches. Uh, reviewing some of them as of late. I just, for some reason, I woke up this morning and, uh, you know, they, they do that marketing thing where they send you recommended videos without recommending them, just put them in front of you. And then I was thinking about Malcolm, and I thought about that speech where he says, it's government. i tell you what it is. You don't have nothing from the paper today that's not government control. Propaganda, they believe in propaganda, psychological warfare. Okay, that speech right there stays on my mind all the time. All the time. Why? Because as one of Jehovah's Witnesses, one of the prophecies of the last days in Revelation, 
the 16th chapter, is the expressions inspired by demons that come forth as if frogs. Well, that's the symbolism for propaganda. And if you notice, the government uses propaganda all the time. When they want to quell something like the Black Lives Matter, whatever came about of that, man, Black Lives Matter were everywhere. You saw black, and then they infiltrated the group, and next thing you know, Black Lives Matter died on out. George Floyd, there were marches all over the place, spray painting and, and walk-ins and sit-ins and every end. And next thing you know, no more George Floyd. Ooh-wee. You see how they, through their little propaganda machine and infiltration and conquer and uh, divide and divide and conquer and all that other stuff, and you don't even hear about the stuff anymore? It's a whole new world when you understand that you all are being manipulated, that the world is being manipulated, and I promise you, I guarantee you, that the AI system is now being utilized. The same as I use the AI system to pull up information for people, to pull up information for myself, they're doing the same thing, but their AI system is a whole lot more powerful than that piece of junk we're using that I refer to as Kevin. Kevin is an, not even an embryo. Kevin is the woman's egg. The system that they have that they get to communicate with it's the one that has graduated from college, got his doctorate degree, and is sitting up there working on becoming president of the United States. Okay? That's the system they're using. We're using just the egg, you know, because it ain't even turned into a life form. It's just an egg. And unless it's fertilized, it ain't going nowhere. And there are some people out there trying to fertilize the egg, but it's too late because it'll take too long to grow. So, if only you people knew about the manipulation that's going on. Look, Russia goes into Ukraine, and America has given Ukraine billions of dollars. Excuse me, why is America in Ukraine? No, 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 shut up. Those of you ignorant morons who are going to say the party line, I can't stand that stupidity. I'm going to ask you again, why is America in Ukraine? America ain't got no business in Ukraine. They didn't have any business interfering with that, and now it's a proxy war because the United States is fighting against Russia, utilizing Ukraine, and all the people who are getting hurt. So what if Russia takes back Ukraine? So what? Well, they never, they never, they never, whatever. So what? We have countries taking over other countries and the United States don't go helping them. So why is the United States helping in Ukraine? You haven't asked the right question. You're just listening to the party line. Oh, the party says that this is the reason, and you listen to that media junk everywhere you go. Support Ukraine. Why not, would I want to support Ukraine? What's Ukraine ever did for me? But if you have that type of thinking, no, you have the wrong thinking. Why are they insisting that we so Well, they're not insisting. It's all voluntary. Yes, why? You're looking and still asking the wrong question. Why is the United States asking for us? to support Ukraine. Why are they getting involved in that war? You guys ask the wrong questions. You focus on the wrong topics, and that's how they get you through propaganda. Why are they in Ukraine, the Americans? Now, ladies and gentlemen, I got a uh, some boxes outside and I opened them up yesterday and I saw there's a dead rodent in one of the boxes and so I got to go take this dead rodent and I got to go dispose of this dead rodent so and I hate talking about stuff like that because I hate dead animals hate it but I got to go do it and so I was going to put my little medical gloves on to go and pick this thing up and dispose of this thing um, because I can't deal with it. And I don't want my dogs eating it. 
You know what I'm saying? They can't get to it anyway. He's in one of the boxes. But I got to redo the boxes and all this other stuff. So while I go do all of that and go focus on our world and how to bring forth complaints. See, everybody, you're bringing forth the wrong complaints. This is an this is a military government. We've been proving it to you that gold French flag thing, uh, being authorized by the president under his capacity as commander in chief, as spoken of by the attorney general. The courts can say that that's a frivolous argument all they want, but the attorney general says it ain't frivolous, and he's the top lawyer for the country. So since the attorney general says it ain't frivolous, and he says that the president did that under his military capacity then it doesn't become a frivolous argument anymore because the attorney general recognizes it as a non-frivolous argument. You feel me? That's how we handle that. All right, look, ladies and gentlemen, I got to go. Go take care of this. So we will talk. All right. Take care of yourself. I'm out.